Well, I'm back with Ben Shapiro, who, just to remind the world, is currently number one rapper in the world, which we'll come to a little later. Uh, ben, let's talk Donald Trump, who's uh, really making one of the all-time great comebacks that politics has ever seen, not just in America, but anywhere. He seems now nailed down for the Republican nomination, and uh, polls I saw today show him significantly up now in almost every swing state, I think, against Joe Biden, who is showing increasing signs of, of senility and dementia. Now, you in 2016, in March, I think it was, said this uh, about Trump. If we don't say no to Donald Trump now, we will continue drifting ever further left, diluting conservatism into the vacillating, demagogic absurdity of Trumpism, Conservatism will become the crypto-racist, pseudo-strong, quasi-tyrannical, toxic brew leftists have always accused of being, and we will have been complicit in that. How do you feel today? Oh, well, I mean, I was wrong on that one, so that's good. I mean, you know, <laughs> I think that in 2016, my objections to Trump were character-based, and they were sort of looking at the state of the world and saying... I just object to this choice. I didn't vote for Hillary. I'm not voting for Trump. That was my take in 2016. So I just didn't vote for president at the top of the ticket in, in 2016 at all, hoping to sort of forestall the binary world that then arrived. Now, one of the things that I was wrong about with regard to Trump is obviously he governed much more to my liking in terms of actual policy than I thought he would based on his campaign. His campaign in 2016 was sort of all over the place. It was quite peripatetic. It was it was you know in one place on, on an issue and then five minutes later, another place on the same issue. But the actual policy that emerged from his administration, particularly in the first three years of his administration, I liked quite a lot. And so obviously I was wrong about all of that. My character critiques of Trump remained. Those have not changed. Even when I endorsed him in 2020, I suggested that my opinions of his character had not shifted particularly much. It was just that my belief was that we were now down to a binary choice, that many of the eventualities I'd hoped to forestall by basically not involving myself in the 2016 election, whatever had happened and now happened. And so the, the situation had changed. I feel the same way with regard to 2024. So obviously... Trump against Biden, I'll vote for Trump. You were in the DeSantis camp. Um, and he, he kind of fizzled away. Uh, I suspect it was really almost out of his hands in the sense that the moment they began throwing all the indictments at Trump, his poll numbers just began to rocket in a way that it was almost impossible for any other candidate to do anything about it. So I don't really blame DeSantis or his campaign. I think it was just an unstoppable tsunami of support that flooded in for Trump right when he most needed it. And it came because the, you know, the Democrats decided to play uh, throwing the kitchen sink at stopping him. And by doing that, all they did was embolden him and make him stronger. I, I think there were two main factors that led to the revival of Trump in this campaign. So as you recall, he actually declared his re-elect in December 2022, which was incredibly early. And a lot of people were, were skeptical of that, including me. I thought that that's a very early reelect campaign, an attempt to basically clear the pool of all other candidates. And DeSantis or anyone else who's hoping to run against him, if they had really had a shot, that shot was only present if they'd gotten in maybe December, January of 2023. The reason being that there was a widespread perception in the Republican Party that because of underperformance in 2022 due to Trump picking bad candidates in the Senate, that made the third straight election where Trump had lost. He had done poorly in 2020. He had done poorly in 2021. He had done pure, poorly in 2022. And so there was a bit of a taste for something new. But then two things happened. One you mentioned, which is the, the indictments drop. And so the Republican Party's heart immediately just reverts to Trump. And you can see it in the polls. Mm. DeSantis is running even with Trump yeah. up till the indictments. The indictments happen. Trump skyrockets. DeSantis drops in proportionate amount. Uh, and, and then there's a second factor, and that is Joe Biden's a terrible president. And so as his poll numbers started to really drop significantly, mm. the big argument that any other Republican had against Trump, which is he's not electable, Biden's going to beat him, that went away. Because when every poll is showing Donald Trump competitive with or ahead of Joe Biden, that argument just doesn't exist anymore. So DeSantis' chief argument, which is you'll get Trumpism without actually Trump. Everyone was like, well, what if I get Trumpism and also Trump, right? I get to I get to have sort of the Trump revenge tour on the people who are victimizing him. And also he can actually win. So basically the entire case for anyone else disappeared. This election will see 8 million new voters in the US electorate and 41 million Gen Z voters. Uh, it's apparently, according to one poll, 18% of voters say they're more likely or significantly more likely to vote for a candidate endorsed by Taylor Swift, the phenomenon of our age. And a lot of conservatives have got very upset about this and think that she's going to deliberately sabotage 
the, the whole thing by saying vote Biden. Uh, do you think this is a bit ridiculous, this whole debate, or is there a point to it? It's not a little bit ridiculous. It's a lot ridiculous. Taylor Swift endorsed Biden in 2020. So, like, who cares? Also, that same poll, by the way, shows that 17% of Americans said they would be less likely to vote for <laughs> for Joe Biden if Taylor Swift endorsed Joe Biden. So, basically, it's a wash. You know, it, th this whole thing, it, it really is just a sign of our absurd times that people are focusing, instead of focusing in on, like, you know, the actual issues, like, who's going to run the country and yeah. how is that foreign policy going to be effectuated and is the economy going to heal? Everybody's focused in on, is there a CIA conspiracy around Taylor Swift or is Taylor Swift really a magical political kingmaker? Uh, by the way, everyone is talking about Taylor Swift mobilizing votes. Taylor Swift has something like 200 million plus, I think it's more, it's like 260 million Instagram followers. She put out in Instagram telling people to register to vote. She got 35,000 people to vote. Mm. And people are treating that like, oh, that's an enormous, 35,000 people? 160 million people voted in the last election cycle. Like, Taylor Swift is not going to be the make or break for Joe Biden. She has had a big effect on NFL ratings, though. That is true. When women, women are watching the NFL for the first time. And <laughs> I will say that my conspiracy theory was that if Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens had been on the brink of actually beating the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship, Lamar Jackson might have actually been drone striked by Roger Goodell from the NFL higher offices because the NFL desperately needs the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I'm putting aside her politics. Um, I would imagine that Taylor Swift is pretty much your idea of, of a good role model, isn't she, for young young girls in particular? I mean, my, my only critique of Taylor Swift is that she's 34 and all of her songs sound like a 17-year-old going through her first breakup. <laughs> that, that's my only critique, is that she's two years younger than my wife. My wife is a doctor and we have four kids and Taylor Swift is 34 and single and still acting like she's in the dating pool. And that, that's my only critique of Taylor Swift. I, my, my great hope for Taylor Swift is that Travis Kelsey proposes to her. She gets married to Travis Kelsey. They have lots of babies and a bunch of young feminist women decide that actually marriage is not the worst idea and they get married and have a bunch of babies and we can have the Taylor Swift baby boom. <laughs>